soul to the connection of who we are collectively and so which leads into the the bigger question uh, the bigger question is what is a filipino because i i often ask this on the show and we're kind of defining it and i i like asking my luminaries or my guests as to what is their personal definition because in hopes here we can have a, a wider conversation within our community especially with the younger generation who are screaming decolonize but the problem with this mentality of decolonization is often this younger generation is doing it out of spite they're mm-hmm. doing it out of anger why are they angry they're not they're not the ones that died exactly so how do we define who we were or who we are without understanding who we were and better yet who are we trying to become and yeah, acknowledging exactly. what we are now so exactly. with that uh continuing on that definition what is a filipino okay so in a nutshell for me mm-hmm. you have lineage originating from the philippine islands mm-hmm. that's it yeah i'm not gonna go beyond that yeah that is it yeah. my son was born in canada Okay, his mom is Canadian American. Mm-hmm. Okay, because he has Filipino lineage, he mm-hmm. had, he tells people that I'm Filipino. Yeah, he's white. You've seen his pictures. You've seen his video. You've talked to him before. Right? <laughs> yeah, but he says I am very Filipino, and yeah. you know what? Good for you, son. That is, I mean, that is that is all that is to, to me. I'm not gonna say anything else because that's all I can think of. That's all I believe in. You have Filipino lineage. You can say that I'm Filipino. You have connection back to the land and the and of the people. Yeah. Um, the land may change, but the land of origin doesn't. Oh, nor yeah. does the blood. And this is that issue about like the wider diaspora of many other peoples. Because so, yeah. absolutely. With so by extension of what is a Filipino, what is FMA? Okay, FMA is a mix of martial arts from wherever. They came from that landed in the Philippines, mm-hmm. and plus also a mix of those and the indigenous art that there was there mm-hmm. from exi- from beginning, right? So we had Filipinos doing their thing, and mm-hmm. then they've had visitors, and they said, "Hey, I like what you're doing. Oh, I like what you're doing too. Let's boom." At the same time, they were cooking food. And that's how we got a mix of different kinds of food too. Yep. And then before you know it, they'd be like, "Hey, you know what? I kind of like your sister." And then the guy said, the girl says, "Oh, I kind of like him." So they had a little mix. Yeah. So that's what makes a Filipino. That's what makes FMA. It is whatever was going on in the Philippine Islands. Uh-huh. Whatever, whoever came in and started uh-huh. sharing techniques, and one plus one, oh, one plus two, right, made it three, which yeah. is FMA. Which is interesting because there's this consistent myth that we tell within our community that the sacred mother art they that was unified throughout the philippines tying all the way back to our chief lapu lapu a basayan mm-hmm. not ilicano not yeah. papangan but a basayan mm-hmm. so yeah. individual kingdom not unified but we the narrative that we tell now in this post-colonial mindset is that mother art from all the way back to the lineage of lapu lapu it's a nice myth it's a nice fairy tale but it's not true but in the spirit of it it's it's nice to see in certain ways because at least we're tying to an to an ancestor uh whether or not it's an actual ancestor due to uh different kingdoms but from the the overall story and narrative of what it is to be the philippines post-colonialism it's nice to have legendary characters that we can hang our hat on and yeah learn from because the the real problem that we run into is when we stop telling these stories because the language dies when we stop speaking it and stop teaching it stories die when we stop telling them so in the case of filipinos this issue about assimilation we become truly assimilated when we stop talking about the things that were us the histories the stories the legends the food Absolutely. And that's one of the things I miss about my grandparents is because they would tell stories about long before technology was around. Mm-hmm. You know, how did they communicate? How come?